Howdy guys and welcome to my second editor video. It's Sunday morning here in Perth, Western Australia. I've just had my morning coffee and it's cold and miserable outside so perfect conditions for video editing. Today we're looking at camo modding within World of Tanks Blitz and the timing for this is spot on because at the moment Wargaming is running a camo modding competition. So we're going to look at that and then we're going to look at the file types that uh, World of Tanks Blitz uses for their camo how to mod them, and then we will add it into the game itself. So let's start with the competition. Bring up Chrome. Here she is. I've got a little synopsis here as well. Uh, runs until the 30th. Uh, you need to submit your own original camo scheme. Uh, file type details are given. Uh, a few rules around it. It has to be original. Uh, can't be offensive. Rah, 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 rah. And within each region is a worldwide competition. Uh, there will be a first, second, third, and they are given a decent amount of gold. And also this medal for creative input, which you definitely don't see around much. That's pretty cool. And one entry across the entire world will be selected to be added into the game. So there'll be a new camo after this competition runs. Now, to help you with your designing, help you visualize what you're doing, they've also included a Photoshop template. And this uh, you can download bring it into Photoshop uh, with these T10 vehicles and you'll be able to overlay your camo and uh, have a pretty good approximation of what it would look like without actually putting the file into the game itself. So let's bring up Photoshop. Here's my sexy E100. This file contains, this is the one I've downloaded from the website, contains a few things, a smart object, which is this box up the corner here, uh, and that talks to this camouflage folder and overlays your image uh, over these base layers just this JPEG in the background so if we double click on the smart object it brings us into here this is uh, the same file size as you will need to submit it's 256 pixels by 256 pixels and I've already brought in one of the existing USSR camos so let's make that visible there it is uh, save that just hit command S for me and there it is the smart object has now got this loaded into it and it overlays it onto the E100. So it's not bad. What if you want to bring in your own? So here's, uh, this is not my own, this is just something from the internet, but a nice little floral number. Open it up in Photoshop and uh, we'll just drag that into the smart object. Align it. Save that. Back to the original template. Sexy, ooh la la. Now you'll notice when you start doing your own that some images will work really well and some will look a bit odd uh, and I have lines where uh, the tiles don't line up uh, because uh, the camo files in game are overlaid side by side with their neighbors and your file needs to be seamless for it to look proper. So let's um, talk about what I mean here. Let's move now to a file that I've done myself pretty basic stuff it's my little ladybug camo and I've got two of these one of these will work in game and one will look pretty bad so have a guess which one do you reckon will work which one won't work it needs to be tiled and what we mean by that is if I move away bring up this little file okay I've got two boxes here I'm gonna overlay a pattern in the top one which is gonna be non tiled and look terrible and I'm going to overlay one in the bottom box, which is tiled and will look uh, as you would expect it to look in game. So let's go here. This is the box here, this file, uh, this layer, sorry. Open up the effects, and I've already preloaded a few camo types in. That's the wrong one. There we go. That is the non tiled one. Uh, and you can see what um, it's doing. The sides don't match up and you get this really bad looking image. So I'm done, let's move now to the tiled one, same again, pattern overlay, move to the tileable one, boom. So a lot better, I mean, when you're doing these on big vehicles like you know, the German uh, tier 10s, uh, big structures like this circle, if they're really, uh, if they stand out a lot, you'll notice it. But um, that is a very smooth image, and that will look pretty good in game. So, tileable versus non-tileable. Let's discuss why and how you do that. 
Here is the tileable image. Uh, and what is happening here in game is the game will layer uh, this small image side by side on a vehicle uh, to cover the entire thing. So this side here, side A, the bottom side needs to match up with side A, the top side, and same with the uh, left and right B sides. So we bring up uh, some guides here. Let's look at this circle here, which overlaps the border edge. These will be fine. Uh, that one there will need to match this side, but this will be fine as well. So let's look at the, look at the big circle here, because that's the most complex. It sits in a corner. Bring up uh, this guide here. Now, the circle leaves to the left, the B side. It needs to match up the opposite B side, and it does. Comes through here, arcs down, bottom A side. Where's another guide? Bottom A side, comes through the top A side, leaves the right side, the B side, opposite side, back up, through the top, back to the bottom, completes the circle. You do that, let's clear these guides, uh, and uh, this is what happens in, in effect. So on the website instructions, when they give you this image, that's what they mean. So you can't have an image that say got, uh, you know, if that didn't match up, if there was yellow here, it would just look terrible in, what have I done? Terrible in the game. So where is my, this is the tileable ladybug. Actually, let's use the non-tileable one. If you're getting this effect, so we use the non-tileable one, bring it into the smart object. Bring into the smart object, please. Overlay it, save it, back to the template, and you can see what's going on here. There is the edge of each unit. Looks bad. Whereas if you use the tileable one, overlay that, save, boom, much smoother. Now that's not how it would look in actuality because um, yeah, this is just a 2D file, but it's a pretty close approximation. You can see the using some kind of Russian black magic, this file in here is even altering the shape of this tile, so it gives it a bit of depth. Not bad, but you probably want to bring it into the game if you're a, a modding enthusiast. It's not very satisfying to see it like that. You want to see it in the game. You want to play around with the actual models. So now we'll look at that. So what are the game files regarding camo? Well, let's bring up this here. Here is something I pulled from the actual game files. This is the original, all the camos in the game. Uh, each tech tree has its own unique camos. And there's also a bunch of common ones, uh, common cheap and common themed for uh, each particular map. So it's two part. There is the image itself, which is the file we're looking at in Photoshop there. It's a .dds. The file you submit can be any old image, uh, JPEG, PNG, but in the game it has to be this .dds. That talks, I think, to an associated .tex file, which tells the game what part of the image on the vehicle should be opaque and what part should be transparent. So anything with the camo on it here is opaque and the transparency part where you can see the underlying vehicle um, is the transparent. I think that's what it's doing. I don't actually know uh, anything about a .tex file. I haven't been able to edit it myself. If anyone out there knows how to do it, please let me know. I'd be interested to find out. So you need to save, if you're putting this into the game, you need to save your image as a .dds, and that's not the easiest thing. Photoshop doesn't do it natively. You need an extension. You just have to search for Photoshop .dds extension. Uh, and I think there's the same thing for GIMP. Uh, your other open source image manipulation software will do it, I think, if you find the right extension. Uh, and then you need to save as a certain type of .dds. So where is my, there she is. That's the tolerable ladybug camo. We're going to save as. Let's 
put in a morning file, save as dot DDS and bring up this options menu. And I'm not too sure whether I'm using the optimal settings for this. There's just been trial and error because there are quite a few options. DXT1 will work uh, as will DXT3 and I've been doing DXT3 I don't know because 3 is better than 1 <laughs> it works, that's all that matters uh, you need to tick the MIP map box and I think that allows scaling um, from what I've read on the internet these filters, no idea it's all a sweet mystery and uh, transparency doesn't seem to do much either so I just leave that I think I'll leave that as none save that now if we leave Photoshop and go to where did I put that morning there it is so what do you do with it then well now you've got to put it in the game and this is where things can get confusing if you don't keep tabs of what you're doing first of all let's talk about the camos in the game and how they are differentiated or organized Let's bring up the dev build. Here's the Mighty Mouse sporting one of my digital camos. Let's look in the camouflage here. Okay, so each class of each nationality, I should say, has for summer, winter, and desert two unique camos that you'd only find in this case the German. And there are three common ones for each map theme, these three here. And there's also two universals that if you select them, uh, it'll be overlaid on your vehicle no matter what map you play on. So what we'll do is we'll bring the ladybug into say one of these universals. Now, how do we do that? Let's get out of this. Go back to here. We want to now go into the game files. You need to put this file here in with the correct name to the correct destination. That's pretty much all you need to do. So applications, let's use the dev build obviously. So for a Mac, show pa package contents. Contents, resources, data, 3D, tanks, camouflages. Here we are, this is the camouflage folder. And we're gonna go common, these two here are the universal uh, for all maps. So let's say we want to replace um, this one here, common underscore 01 dot dx 11 dot dds. Don't know which one it is, it's one of the two, doesn't really matter. So to do this, all we're going to do is drag in the ladybug to this folder, but it needs the correct name. So command C, copy that name. Copy that, I'll paste that I should say. And before doing anything like this, you wanna make sure you back up. So now, oops, copy that file, bring it into here. No, you can't do that, keep both. That is the original, this is the ladybug. And now, bring that one into here. In this case, replace, because you don't want two files in there. It's in. Now, if I've done this correctly, if we go back to Blitz, uh, it won't show up immediately. You've got to reset things. So let's, um, Soviet, back to the mouse. Go away, Soviets. Don't want to reveal anything by mistake in this dev build. Camouflage, there she is in the universal. Ladybug. <laughs> very garish <laughs> but it works so get out of that let's run it in the game see what it looks like there's only black goldville in this particular version of the game so let's sell the summer digital put the universal in the desert slot and away we go There she is, look at that. Super effective camouflage on a desert map. Where is it gone? I can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> 
So that's a wrap guys, thank you for watching. Uh, once the competition is over, if you've made a few designs you're quite proud of and you want to get them out there and share them, feel free to send them in to my ruckus.comp gmail account and if we get a bunch in there that look quite good, maybe we'll put them in the next mod pack. So thank you and I'll catch you all on the next one. Peace.